Oh my god, it's so good! Wow! Oh, thank you. wow. Yeah. Now who are we have the honor of, of in the studio? Mike Bolt. Mike, now you are in charge of the cup. I am, sir. Uh, now are you the only security for this? No, there's about three of us. I work for the Hockey Hall of Fame in Toronto. Nice. Uh, I probably do 70% of it. Uh, we have another guy that comes on in the summer that helps us, and then Phil Pritchard, who's our curator or VP, is kind of the guy that's in charge of the okay. scheduling and travels with it also. Too. Now, when you say you're in charge of the cup, does that mean that, let's say, for example, tonight you'll be in your hotel room sleeping and the cup will be in the room with you? Yeah, it does stay in our hotel. I was in my hotel room last night. With, I, was, I was sleeping with one eye open and my hand on it. So, so that's you know, the kung greatest fu? thing ever! Are you like I'm a kidding kung somewhat. I do sleep with both eyes. <laughs> Are you a kung fu master or what? I mean, how, I, I mean, say what is the word kung fu master. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. So the cup already made its rounds to the local Pittsburgh television stations, and I was reading online at Channel 4 when you took the cup there that the cup has been used in baptisms. The cup has been at the bottom of Mario Lemieux's pool. Is this all true? 100%. Oh, my okay. goodness. Tell okay. us a little more about that. <laughs> no, the, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. Answer this one first? All right. Um, yeah, I mean, Jay Feaster uh, was the last, uh, he was the general manager of Tampa, did baptize his baby in it. Uh, yes, it was in the bottom of Mary Lemieux's pool. Mario did not put it there. Phil Bork did. I heard that. Um, <laughs> it does, it's, see, they thought it was going to float. It does not float. It's hollow. <laughs> it will float there for about maybe about five seconds, and then boom, it sinks. So uh, both chlorine and water is not good for it, but uh, they got it out with the bowl, snapped off the top of it, for what I understand. There was no keeper of the cup back then. My job is to keep it out of the pools. Got okay, it. Now, th th this is going to sound stupid, but like when the, you win the Super Bowl, you get an NFL trophy, and that stays with the team t forever. How long does the cup stay with the winning team, the Penguins? Uh, <laughs> the winning team will get 100 days with the Stanley Cup. So pretty much from the minute they win the Stanley Cup to the, pretty much when the puck drops for the regular season. I was at a bar in Monroeville. I was like 21 years old when they won in 92, and I drank out of that Stanley Cup. My goodness. That's very cool. Is that very common? In the city that the cup is won in, it does happen. There's the People show. drink out of it. Oh, yeah. They I mean, still allow it, or you don't allow that anymore? No, no. I mean, if, I mean, you know, he was some player had it at the bar. And, and right out to the bar, we filled it up, and he was passing around. It was like yeah. the coolest thing. And, it was, and, and that, to me, is what makes this the ultimate sports trophy. This is sacred, but it's sacred in a fun way. I mean, the, the stories about the Stanley Cup are all crazy cool and fun. I mean, it, they said it right there. It's sacred in a fun way. I mean, uh... A lot this time of year, it's kind of sacred. We're you know we're out there with the white gloves, and the fans sometimes don't want to touch it until their team wins it. But after it's won, it's a gong show. Can I walk over and look at it? Sure. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. I won't lift it. I won't swear to you. I promise. I don't want the keeper. I don't want the keeper to, keep, don't don't want the keeper to, to beat my ass. Is there a place where people that are listening right now will have a chance to see this if they want to get up close and personal? Do you have any events scheduled for it? Keep an eye out on the highway when we're driving by. <laughs> That's not it. <laughs> that is I'm sacred. looking for the Penguins' last oh, win. Right Where is it? I know, oh, I'm looking. Second Where band up and right third band up. Don't touch it, Beaker. Don't touch it. Get away. Get away. Let's get talk away. about the bands real quick. What happens to the bands as they go off and then you add new ones? Yeah, so for everybody that's listening, uh, there's five major bands in the cup, the barrel part, and then it kind of curls in, goes into an, uh, kind of a stove pipe, and then into the bowl. Right. The five bands, actually, are the ones that interchange, and the top band's going to come off in 10 years, go into the Hockey Hall of Fame in Toronto, move everything up and put a new ring on the bottom. How many bands are in the There's two retired bands. Actually, the very first band to ever go into the into the Hall of Fame um, was uh, was in 1992, actually, because uh, they had to make room for the 92 Penguins. Okay. And it's actually a neat story because they weren't sure what they were going to do back then. And they said, do we make a new cup? Do we make, make it bigger? And yeah. Brian Trottier, who was also on the, on, the, on the 91 and 92 Penguins, right, right. and also on the Four Islanders, said, you know what, it's the perfect size, weight, and height that lift over your head. Yeah. And that's when they decided, you know what, we'll keep the same size and weight and height, and we'll retire bands. And that's kind of how it came to be, is that the bands going to the Hall of Fame. That's interesting. I just uh, checked out the cup, and there's something that I, I don't know why I never knew. What is Dominion Hockey Challenge Cup? It's what it says on the on the bowl. What does that mean? It was originally uh, Challenge Cup in Canada for amateur hockey. That's what Laura Stanley donated it to originally in Dominion of Canada back in 1892, or 93, I should say. Uh, was what the league was called. Uh, it became a professional trophy in 1910 called the NHA, and then in 1917, 18, it was the, uh, became the NHL. In 1910, when it became a professional league, they named it after the gentleman who donated it, Lord Stanley, and that's how it became. That's great. Great. That's very it's cool. amazing awesome. history. It's it, you know what it feels great just to be sitting next to it. And, and tell us exactly what gets put on the cup when the Penguins win. The winning team. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, the politically correct guy that I am. 
Uh, the winning team will have everything. It'll start off with the ownership, general manager, coaches, trainers, players. Sometimes the scouts go on there, sometimes doctors. Yeah. But you can put up to 52 names per year on the Stanley Cup. There's currently, right now, 2,138 names on it. I get a little bored in the hotel room, so I count. I could imagine. Can Buckhead and Bubba's name go on He's there? You can make an exception, That's a right? I'm sure if they had a, a paste it note or whatever, we'll <laughs> stick it on there. <laughs> Mother's an of the cup. Yeah. I, I don't know what else to say about the Stanley Cup because it's actually physically sitting in the studio and we're videotaping it. So people that don't believe it's in the studio with us, they can watch it online at b94.com. Are we allowed to take pictures with yeah. it? Okay, can, do you have to hold it though at all times, right? right. You can, you can stand next to it. Yeah. All right, all right. Yeah. Sure. I think it might be taller yeah. than me. All right, well, let's, let's, <laughs> take, let's take a break. We'll take some pictures here. And thank you so much for yeah. bringing the Stanley Cup. No problem, guys. Thanks for having us. Thank you. And we know it'll stay here.